Hey everyone, it's Deborah with Diva Lady Designs. I'm so happy you chose to spend some time with me today. First, I have to apologize for my voice. I've been dealing with some health issues over the past couple of months and things are much better now. I'm so grateful that I'm able to be back in the craft room. Today, I want to talk about color. Now, I'm not a professional artist. Card making is my hobby. So choosing a color palette to use for my designs can sometimes be a little overwhelming. But I have two design secrets that I use to help with this, and I wanted to share them with you today. My first design secret is the Color Catalog by Sarah Renee Clark. Sarah is a wonderful artist, and she took her knowledge of and experience with color to create a collection of color palettes that is great for both hobbyists and professionals. There are several digital volumes available, as well as her new color cube that has cards you can use to guide your color choices. I find myself using this color catalog over and over to help me with my card designs. I've put the link to her website below for your convenience if you're interested. But even with a designated color palette, it can be daunting to know how much of a color to use where. And here's the second secret tool I use that makes choosing color proportions easy. It's the 60-30-10 rule. Simply put, the 60-30-10 rule states that 60% of your design should be one color or group, 30% is made up of another color or group, and 10% is for the third color or group. You want to think of that one as an accent color. Now the rule sounds simple, but in use it can be a little tricky, so I thought I'd walk you through the process. We're going to use this card. I created it based on a color palette from the color catalog. I'm going to show you how to use the color palette and the 60-30-10 rule to help guide you to the best color balance for your card or design. For my card today, I'm using the Spellbinders Floral Reflections Bundle. This bundle comes with two sets of dies. First, these fabulous nesting frames. I love that they can be used independently or as frame mats. The other set consists of some beautiful yet different floral dyes. The flowers and branches are varied, but what makes it special is this focal image. It's different from other Spellbinders releases, and I felt that made it worthwhile to purchase the set. Here is the color palette I chose. It has various pink shades as well as some black and white. I didn't have any pinks that matched the bright colors, so I went with a purple magenta foiled cardstock that was a great combination of the two pinks. For my lighter pink, I chose a blush rose mirror cardstock. Black glossy cardstock worked for the black color, and for my white, I chose this gorgeous white glitter cardstock from Hero Arts. Looking at this, I could tell that the white would probably end up being my main color. Black might be good for an accent or maybe even the dark pink. So then I die cut some flowers and laid them out on the cardstocks to see what might work. I tried to vary the colors and arrangement. This helped tremendously. From this I could tell that the darker pink could easily overwhelm my card, so that would end up being an accent color. The lighter pink and black were more neutral, so those could easily be my middle colors. Looking at how color contrasts or blends can be a great way to decide how much to use for your design. In the end, I did decide that white would be my main color for 60% of the design. Both the black and the rose color would be my next biggest color. I loved the black for the frame and the rose was perfect for the larger die cut. The darker pink purple would be my accent. With the color proportions set, I began to put my design together. One of the beautiful things about this color rule is that it helps you stay on track. You can play around and experiment with different combinations until you get it just right. I recommend laying everything out before you glue it down. What you're watching here is me gluing down the die cuts after I had laid out the flowers and changed things around. For example, I die cut lots of flowers in white, light pink, and dark pink. 
And I started out thinking that I wanted the flowers to be dark pink. However, when I laid it out, it became apparent that the darker pink took over the design and was much more than the 10% I had allotted to it. When I swapped it out with white flowers, it was much more pleasing to the eye and everything fell into proportion. The 60-30-10 rule is not hard and fast. The numbers don't have to be exact or you don't have to use all the colors of the palette. I combined the dark pink and purple into one, for example. The idea is that you plan out the general proportion of colors and then work within the decision you've made. Look at the beautiful floral frame. I love how the white flowers created a flow across the center, but I felt that it needed a little more of the dark pink. So I cut another frame from the magenta mirror cardstock to layer behind the black. I cut it in half and glued half of it to the back of the black frame. I set it so that the pink color peeked out above and along the sides of the black frame. I centered my frame onto my white embossed panel. By the way, I used Spellbinder's fan motif embossing folder, which is the November embossing folder of the month. The panel is cut to four and an eighth by five and three eighths inches. I adhered that to an A2 top folding black card base. For my sentiment, I used one that I found in my sentiment stash. It's a foiled greeting from Pink Fresh Studios Fancy Script Words Hot Foil and Die Set. I use this set a lot in my card making and it's one of my favorites. I love it because of the size, the script, and because in addition to thanks and happy birthday and the like, it has such greetings as you are amazing and you are the best. I love this card. To use it, I'll put a smaller white panel on the inside where I can write a personal message. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you'll experiment with color palettes. Check out the color catalog. You won't be sorry you did. I've listed all the products I used below along with links if you're interested. If you enjoyed my video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, you are welcome to subscribe. Thank you so much for joining me at Diva Lady Designs.